Brilliant. Thanks for the intro. Yeah, I'm Paul Brown from Ferro Science Limited. I am a GI remote sensing scientist and, and geomatic surveyor, uh, chartered with the Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors. Um, and I've been PI of the Sentinel Treescape project uh, during the last two, three years. Um, so I just want to capture first that it's a multidisciplinary team. We've, we've spoke about this extensively. Um, Ferro and Newcastle University bringing the remote sensing GIS, um, data science and social sciences to the project. University of Strathclyde, bringing the data science and the modeling. Um, UK uh, CEH, uh, Michael, uh, bringing his ecological and social science and citizen science expertise. Uh, working with charities, um, specifically the Tree Council, and also looking at uh, working with the Tree Council Warden Network um, in Norfolk, um, who have been providing the tree condition assessments and uh, the Internet of Things network management as well. And also um, Norfolk County Council providing A, the land for the sites that we used, and also uh, stakeholder engagement workshops and uh, tree inspections done by um, their tree health inspector. So the challenge, why monitor tree health? Um, so trees are under increasing stress from pests, diseases, and climate change. This project was looking at multiple threats. We weren't concerned with one particular issue. We're looking at trying to make an early warning system for the spread of current threats or the incursion of a new, a new threat to our treescape. The loss of trees has implications for conservation, biodiversity, um, ecosystem services, and public safety. Um, and we can see on the images there, um, images of tree health problems, uh, powdery mildew, um, lesions on the tree trunk, and then also the resulting uh, the, re the results of those problems, felling of the, that treescape next to roadway because it becomes a safety, a public safety concern. The timeline here is just a little um, snapshot just showing you the amount of diseases, threats that are threatening our treescape over the last, sort of, um, since 1997. Most notably, you, you will have all heard of in 2012, the incursion of ash dieback, which has been um, uh, really affecting our uh, ash tree uh, population here in the UK. So that's the challenge that we wanted to look at. And so what, what were the aims of the project? We were looking to develop and demonstrate a monitoring system to detect stress from multiple causes, um, able to be deployed at a landscape regional scale. We want to scale this demonstrator up moving forward. Combine citizen science in the tree warden network um, with technology and modeling methods. And we were looking to design and demonstrate a blueprints for future deployment throughout the UK. So this little schematic, this little diagram is a real nice catch-all of, of a sentinel treescape. Um, you start with the monitoring system. It's been deployed since May 2021 uh, in Norfolk, just east of Norwich in the UK. Uh, we've got uh, woodland on, uh, we've got woodland sites, roadside sites, and farmland sites. And we're observing the stress uh, recorded on 150 ash, oak, and sweet chestnut trees, including 60 that have been monitored by the Internet of Things, the tree talker sensors. So these, on the bottom left-hand corner, these wireless tree talker sensor network, it measures the physiology, the canopy condition, the growth and stability, alongside environmental variables like temperature, relative humidity. Combined with that is the citizen science observations. So the Tree Council Tree Warden volunteers have been undertaking visual surveys using an app that we designed uh, to monitor the tree health of the, the trees with the sensors on and a further 50 trees in the three woodland environments. We've also been capturing drone data and satellite data to look at the upscaling aspect, whether we can see what we're seeing on the ground observations, whether we're seeing that spectrally in the canopy uh, spectral response. And then it's just how we integrate that data and model and scale up from this demonstrator project. project. And here's a few images, uh, tree talk sensor, and then the, the tree wardens out inspecting the trees. Did a huge amount of engagement with the, the tree wardens, uh, working with the tree council, doing spring in the woods, summer in the woods, autumn in the woods, and would go around on a tree walk, looking at species identification. Then also discuss the network, discuss how the observations are going, what improvements can be made. And one key aspect that came out of this engagement and, and evolved during the project is we kind of started with these Internet of Things sensors and these tree worn observations. And to my fault, I kind of looked at them as separate entities. 
but they very much started to merge. And what we found is the technology, the IoT technology, was driving the engagement of the, the tree wardens. And they wanted to get more involved in that network. And, it, and, and at, at the start of the project, once we got the network out in, in the field, it, we realized that they wanted to help maintain that network. So they were changing the batteries, uh, monitoring the battery life, making small repairs when a rabbit ate through a wire, something like that. So we actually developed a dashboard, an online dashboard, where they could monitor in real time the battery life of each individual sensor. So they could literally go and change the batteries that needed changing rather than having to haul 20 very heavy batteries back and forth in one time. So that was a really um, brilliant part of the project, seeing that engagement and how they wanted to get more involved. So I'm just going to touch very briefly on some sort of results because we've got the poster out there. We can discuss it more extensively um, during the breaks. Um, but these are the tree health status from the tree worn observations. So this is looking at average um, health status across the three sites. Um, correlating all their, their observations over an 18-month period to really get that general picture of um, the health of those individual trees. And then what we can do is we can look at the spectral response in those certain canopies of those trees and see if we, if we can see those stresses in the remote sensing data. And then another one is just uh, species classification, so looking at um, machine learning algorithms using e-cognition to um, classify the treescape uh, from the remotely sensed data. I'll finish there on the slides. I think the main challenges um, with this project is the sensors were very much a, at a research stage in the sensor when we started the project, and the company that developed this sensors has actually sort of exploded, and they've got, they've got too much demand for the supply. So having the support from them was, was a little bit lacking. And the hub failures, the 20 sensors go to a hub, um, and then that hub comes back to the database at Faro in real time. Uh, but we had hub failures quite often, so we had to go down a five-hour journey just to swap out a hub. And then you'd, you'd um, miss data. You'd have like a couple of weeks where there wasn't data coming in. Luckily, the tree talker sensors actually hold the data internally themselves. So, but it means walking around each individual one, taking them apart, serial input, download the data. So that was a little bit of a challenge. Um, a positive, um, we're really looking to scale this up and see how we can understand how we can distribute these sentinel uh, treescapes in a region and then extrapolate between this modeling. So we've actually um, got a PhD starting at the end of this month um, who's been awarded funding through Ferret and Newcastle University's Joint Institutes IAFRI to continue the project for another three years. So that's great. Thank you very much.